This is the FBSO Professor John Evans Atta Mills, named after the fifth democratically elected president of the Republic of Ghana. The floating production, storage and offloading vessel is being used to extract oil and gas from the 10 fields Chenebwa, Enyenra and Intome, located some 60 kilometers off the west coast of Ghana. This state-of-the-art vessel is Ghana's second deep-water offshore oil and gas facility and it will be permanently moored over the 10 field where it will have the capacity to process up to 80,000 barrels of oil per day. Hi, my name is Steve Gallagher. I'm the operations manager from ODEC. Welcome on board the FPSO Professor John Evans Atta Mills. During this presentation, you'll learn more about this vessel, the potential hazards on board, and the controls that are in place to minimize these. Your safety is our primary concern, so you will hear about the critical part you must play to help maintain the environment, health, and safety standards on board. Tiller Oil is the duty holder of the 10 field, and they have contracted MODEC for the lease, operation, and maintenance of this FPSO. Both Tullo and MODEC expect you to act in accordance with all of our onboard EHS policies. We're fully committed to a system that maintains a safe place of work while protecting the FPSO, the environment, and of course our people. As part of our commitment to HSEQ, all personnel on board are given both the right and responsibility to stop any work they perceive to be unsafe. Should you exercise this right, then you are obliged to inform your supervisor so the hazard can be evaluated and assessed and proper controls put into place before work is resumed. Tullo and MODEC fully support this stop work policy and no individual will ever be reprimanded for stopping work due to safety concerns. The MODEC Group life-saving rules reinforce that which employees and subcontractors must be aware of to prevent injuries and fatalities. These rules are simple, straightforward and they do what they say. They save lives. They are not optional, they are mandatory. So please watch out for each other and ensure that everyone understands and follows these rules. It's important to MODEC and to our client Tullo that everyone goes home safely. Thank you. Your safety is our number one priority. All of us have the right and responsibility to stop work if it seems unsafe. Everybody must adhere to our safety policies and the MODEC group life-saving rules. Let's look out for each other and make sure everyone goes home safely. The field subsea system consists of two main production flow line loops working together with both gas and water injection to maintain reservoir pressures. The mixture of oil and gas flows up from the production wells that are strategically located around the field. A system of production trees, jumpers, flow lines and flexible risers carries the crude up to the FPSO for processing. The FPSO is tarot moored to the seabed and designed to weather vane. The mooring system consists of three sets of three anchor legs which connect the FPSO to piles on the ocean floor. The crude goes through the FPSO's crude separation and stabilization system and the gas compression and water treatment systems. The top sides also include the chemical, water and gas injection systems and other facilities such as the laboratory, electrical and instrumentation. The helideck and living accommodation are located at the stern of the FPSO, further is away from the production and any hazardous equipment. There are six main decks in the accommodation. The upper deck contains a designated smoking room, changing room and lockers, central equipment room, HVAC, laundry room, refrigerated food storage areas and access to the engine room. The A deck includes the mess room and the central control room, the emergency response center, the permit to work office and the galley. The B deck includes general offices and accommodation, conference room, television lounge, gym, phone booths, cinema, recreation room, internet cafe, OIM office and the Tallow Reps office. The C deck includes further accommodations, the dispensary and hospital. The D deck has only accommodation while the bridge includes the radio room and the helicopter administration office. While on board, you'll be allocated a comfortable room with a TV. There's Wi-Fi connectivity throughout the vessel and an internet cafe located on B deck.
There are two areas on board the FPSO where smoking is permitted. The dirty smoking room is on the main deck near the changing room and the clean smoking room is on the B deck starboard adjacent to the recreation room. Smoking is not allowed in the cabins. During alarm conditions and power failures, all smoking must cease immediately. Alcohol and narcotics are not permitted on board the FPSO. Any personnel found to be in a state of inebriation or in possession of alcohol or narcotics will be removed from the vessel at the earliest opportunity and their employment subject to immediate termination. All personnel are subject to searches of their baggage and accommodation as well as random screenings for drugs and alcohol. Upon arrival, all medical forms must be signed and given to the onboard medic. Any prescription or regular medicines should also be declared at this time. Smoking is strictly prohibited in the cabins. Drugs and alcohol are not allowed on this FPSO. Remember to declare your prescription medicines to the onboard medic. The FPSO is a 24-hour operating facility. Working shifts are 0600 to 1800 and 1800 to 0600 hours. Breakfast is served from 5 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. Morning tea and coffee is served from 9 a.m. to 9.30. Lunch is served from 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Afternoon tea and coffee are served from 1500 to 15.30 and supper is served from 17.30 to 18.30. Laundry is collected daily, first thing in the morning. In your cabin, you will find a laundry bag imprinted with your room number. Be sure you empty all items from your pockets before bagging your laundry, as items such as keys and coins can damage the laundry machines and sharp objects may injure laundry personnel. You must deposit your laundry on the lower deck before 18.30 every evening if you require it back the following morning. There's no laundry service through the night. Your laundry will be available for you to collect in the morning. Your personal belongings are your responsibility, so be sure to keep your valuables secure. If you're bringing electronic equipment such as laptops or music players on board, you must ask the HSE coordinator for a personal material property form in order to declare your equipment. Upon receiving the form, have all the signatories sign the document, return a copy to the HSE coordinator and keep the original. The use of cameras and video equipment is not permitted on board unless a permit has been acquired before use. The use of mobile phones, iPods, portable music players and other personal electronic devices is strictly prohibited outside of the accommodation. All electronic equipment must be PAT tested at the heli lounge before boarding the FPSO. The fitness area is for everyone's use, so please keep it clean and tidy. At least two persons should be in the gym at all times during exercise in case of an injury or illness. Be careful not to overdo your workout. No equipment is to be removed from the gym and remember to unplug running machines and switch off the lights when you're finished. Open shoes including flip-flops, thongs and strapless sandals are prohibited even inside the accommodation as they'll make you more susceptible to slips, trips and falls. As the FPSO is a 24-hour operation, there are always some personnel asleep in the cabins, so please be considerate and keep the noise down. Speak quietly and turn the volume down on your handheld radio. Your personal belongings are your responsibility. Be sure to keep your variables secure. All electronic equipment must be part tested and declared before it is brought on board. Remember, for safety's sake, always work out with a buddy. This is a 24 hour operation, so please keep the noise down. As a responsible operator that considers the assessment and management of risk as a critical concern, Talo Ghana Limited has adopted a safety case approach for the 10 development. This approach provides a recognized framework 
within which the assessment and management of the risk of major accident events MAEs or major environmental events MEEs can be conducted recorded and demonstrated throughout the operational life of a development the operation safety case for the 10 development addresses how the risks of MAEs or MEEs are assessed and managed during the operational life of a project to ensure that the facility is operated in a way that satisfies TGL's risk acceptance criteria. The MODEC Maximum Maintenance Management System is used to schedule and track the required inspections, tests and maintenance on all safety critical equipment. Because of the safety critical nature of all the equipment, procedures and training defined within the safety case, none should ever be omitted, taken out of service or changed in any way without undergoing a formal management of change process. This would require a formal review and approval from the TALO and or MODEC management. All process areas where there is the possibility for a release of hydrocarbons are considered as classified hazardous areas. Also note that there are other restricted spaces such as the engine room, switch room, pump room and turret chain table. Any equipment installed or brought into these areas must meet strict industry codes. This is to ensure that they are appropriately rated to prevent the ignition of any flammable gases that may escape from the top side's process systems. You must never enter any of these areas to perform any hot work and you should never carry electronic devices such as cell phones or laptops into these areas without first receiving the proper permits from your supervisor. As a general rule, none of these devices are allowed outside the accommodation area without a permit. Process safety devices are installed on all hydrocarbon equipment to detect and control situations outside of normal operating conditions caused by things such as overpressurization, overflow or overheating of hydrocarbons. These conditions can cause damage or release of hydrocarbons from the process system which can lead to fires or explosions. These devices work with the control systems within the central control room to automatically initiate an ESD or emergency shutdown of process equipment to quickly isolate hydrocarbon liquids and dispose of flammable gases through the flare and vent systems. An ESD can also be manually activated at the discretion of the CCR operator or from specific locations situated around the facility. The FPSO is equipped with four types of detection systems fire, gas, heat and smoke. Fire detectors are generally located throughout all hydrocarbon process areas. Gas detectors are located in parts of the FPSO where flammable or toxic gas could accumulate such as the process modules, e-house, flare scrubber, turret and gas turbines. They're also located within air intakes of buildings and machinery spaces. Heat detectors are located in manned areas where excessive heat can be an issue such as the machinery room, fire pump room, engine room, galley and emergency generator room. Smoke detectors are provided throughout the normally manned buildings such as the accommodation areas, laboratory and e-house. All these detection systems provide early warning to prevent injuries and permit a safe evacuation if needed. In addition, these systems are connected logically to the FPSO's control systems and will automatically activate the alarm systems, ESD and fire suppression systems depending on the detection scenario. Along with the automatic systems which are initiated by fire and gas detection, manual alarm call points or MAC stations are located strategically around the FPSO to allow anyone to initiate a general alarm if needed in an emergency. In addition to the MAC points, ESD push buttons are located throughout the process areas. 
Activation of these push buttons will initiate a process shutdown and should only be used if an adverse situation such as a fire, oil or gas release is identified on the process plant. Blue abandoned ship buttons are located in the CCR, heli deck and other lifeboat stations. In the event of a major emergency, activation of these buttons will initiate a total platform shutdown and evacuation of the FPSO. In the event of an evacuation, emergency walkway lights will assist your exit to the temporary refuge or mess room, the forward refuge or the lifeboat station. Should a fire be detected, there are several suppression systems throughout the FPSO to quickly control and extinguish the fire. There are four diesel-driven fire water pump units which will pump seawater to the distribution system that runs throughout the turret, topsides and hull. The distribution system is recognizable by the red color coding of its piping and equipment. This system brings fire water to hydrants and host stations located throughout the topsides modules in the turret, on the helideck and near the accommodations. These hydrants are strategically placed so that firefighters can cover all areas from different directions with two separate host streams. The distribution system also supplies fire water to deluge systems used to cool hydrocarbon containing process equipment, heat exchangers and the cargo storage tanks within the hull. In addition to the hydrants and deluge, some parts of the system also use foam which is mixed with the seawater to provide enhanced firefighting capabilities. High expansion foam is also available within the engine room and the pump room. Other types of gaseous firefighting systems are used in areas where water spray is not appropriate. This includes automatic energy extinguishing systems in the emergency generator room, the forward fire pump room and the e-house. A wet chemical system is also available within the galley. Finally, portable fire extinguishers are provided throughout the process area, accommodation areas and in the CCR, radio room, corridors and galley. These can be used by anyone to put out small contained fires. A public address and general alarm system or PA and GA system is used to broadcast alarms and messages via speakers located throughout FPSO. In high noise areas, visual alarms or flashing beacons are also installed to supplement the audio alarms. A PABX or VoIP based telephone system is available in the accommodations and at strategic locations around the FPSO. There are also intrinsically safe, handheld portable UHF radios for communicating around the FPSO. A separate VHF marine radio telephone system is also available to communicate with incoming and outgoing helicopters, attendance vessels and offload tankers and for making and receiving distress calls. When using the radio, speak slowly and clearly and if in a high noise area, move to an area with less noise to communicate your message and speak directly into the microphone. A closed circuit television or CCTV system around the FPSO allows the CCR operator to monitor the FPSO operations as well as restricted access areas such as the turret, pump room and engine room. The accommodation master points on the FPSO provide a safe location within the temporary refuge or TR for personnel to gather while an emergency situation is assessed and managed or until the decision is made to evacuate the facility. The primary master point is in the mess room on A deck port side of the accommodation module. Whenever possible, use the outer stairways to reach your master point to reduce congestion on the internal stairway. The secondary location for mustering is the area adjacent to the lifeboat stations on the port and starboard sides of the A deck. When mustering at the lifeboat, take up position on the marked spot to assist with POB counting. An additional muster area is also designated at the bow of the FPSO on the forward starboard side near the turret. This is provided as an alternative muster point in the event that personnel are unable to reach the primary TR master area in the mess room. 
It provides a temporary shelter equipped with means for communicating with a central control room. Personnel who mustered at the forward master area should remain there until instructed to do otherwise. In unrestricted and normally manned areas on the FPSO, there are two designated escape paths leading to the TR or forward master areas. These are visible with emergency lighting and are recognizable by their green non-skid surface and yellow lines painted along each side of the parts on the main deck and yellow on the top side modules. The main pathways run along the port and starboard sides of the main deck on the FPSO. Please note that these also serve as the designated walkways during normal operations. There are four lifeboats on board the FPSO, each with a capacity for 60 men. Lifeboat numbers 1 and 3 are located on the starboard side of the accommodation A deck. Lifeboat numbers 2 and 4 are located on the port side. Each person will be assigned to one of these lifeboats upon arrival onto the FPSO. It's very important that you remember your lifeboat number and know how to reach it from any place on the FPSO There are 18 David launched life rafts on board the FPSO. 16 of these are located near the lifeboats, 8 on the port side and 8 on the starboard. Two additional life rafts are located at the forward area of the FPSO on the main deck, one on the starboard side and one on the port side near the forward master area. A David-launched fast rescue craft is also available from the starboard side for search and rescue of personnel who may enter the water either accidentally or during an emergency situation. A donut personal control descent device is also available on board the FPSO. This device is for tertiary escape from an onshore installation when conventional means are not possible. It enables personnel to escape by means of individual controlled descent once the device has been attached to a handrail or other load-bearing structure. It's easy to use and requires minimal physical effort. Ensure, if you're working in the turret area, that you've been trained to use this alternative method of escape to see. In your cabin, you will find an emergency escape pack containing gloves, a flashlight, batteries, a light stick and a smoke hood. Do not remove the torch for any other purpose other than emergency. If an alarm sounds when you are in your cabin, always take your emergency pack with you to the master point even if you are engaged in a drill. Please check the contents of your pack and report any anomalies to the HSE coordinator. You need a permit to enter classified hazardous areas with electronic device. Know your nearest master point so you can find it quickly in an emergency. The primary master point is in the mess room on the A deck, the port side of the accommodation module. If an alarm sounds when you are in your cabin, always take your emergency pack to the master point. A T card system is used on board the FPSO to account for personnel in the event of an emergency. Along with your cabin assignment, the medic will issue you two tea cards printed with your name and which lifeboat you are assigned to. You must place one of the tea cards in the tea card rack located inside of the primary master station, which is located in the mess room, and place the other one in the tea card rack located at your assigned lifeboat station. Both of these cards should be placed with your name facing out and visible. Remember when mustering at the lifeboat to take up position on the marked spots to assist with POB counting. There are two alarms used on the FPSO, the general alarm and the abandoned FPSO alarm. The general alarm is an intermittent horn and will be followed by an announcement over the PA system. Upon hearing the general alarm, you should make your workplace safe and proceed to the primary master station in the TR mess room if it is safe to do so. 
When you arrive at the primary master station, remember to turn your tea card over so the master checker knows that you've arrived. The abandoned FPSO alarm is a continuous horn followed by an announcement over PA system. Upon hearing the abandoned FPSO alarm, proceed immediately to your designated lifeboat station. When arriving at the lifeboat station, don your life jacket immediately and wait for instructions from the coxswain who will tell you when and how to board the lifeboat safely. Crew members should turn over their tea card and place it back in the rack at the lifeboat station. If your lifeboat is inaccessible, go directly to the adjacent lifeboat or one on the other side of the FPSO. Listen carefully to all PA announcements and obey the instructions given by the master checker. Life jackets are provided in boxes at the port and starboard lifeboat decks and at the forward master area. They are also provided in each accommodation. Life jackets are equipped with reflective tape, whistles and lights and they must be donned before entering a lifeboat. Whenever you go to lifeboat stations, you must don your life jacket immediately. This also includes all lifeboat drills. To don your life jacket, unlatch the two buckles. Pull open the center, separating the Velcro. Place the yoke over your head and push the Velcro back together. Now, connect the small buckle under your chin by pressing the two parts together. Pass the belt around your waist and connect the buckle by pushing the two parts together. Finally, pull the strap tight around your waist and tuck the extra length of strap inside your life jacket. If you discover a fire, raise the alarm immediately using the nearest MAC station and go to your master point. If no MAC station is nearby, call the CCR by radio channel 2 or by telephone 73333. Due to multinationalities on board, only communicate the following two items when reporting to the CCR. Indicate what the emergency is and indicate where the location of the emergency is. If you're confident in your ability and can maintain an escape route, use a fire extinguisher to control the fire until an emergency team arrives. If you discover a man overboard, immediately raise the alarm and ask for help. Shout, man overboard, repeatedly and point to the person in the water, never taking your sight of the person in the water. Your knowledge of the person's location is of vital importance to the rescue team. Your hailing and pointing will alert personnel to come and assist you. If you can call the CCR on your handheld radio without losing sight of the man overboard, then do so. Otherwise, Wait for help to arrive before calling the CCR over the telephone. It's essential that you throw as many life buoys or anything that floats as you can to the man in the water, even if you cannot reach him. Life buoys are located around the perimeter railings of the FPSO. If you discover an injured or unconscious person, immediately raise the alarm and ask for help. Call the CCR by radio channel 2 or telephone. Assess the area around the person for any external factors. If it is safe to do so and if you have the skills, offer assistance. If you can't, notify the emergency response team of any conditions you are aware of. Be very careful about touching an unconscious person as there may be unseen hazards or injuries. Consider the potential of a gas release may be the cause of the unconscious person. If you hear the general alarm, Make your workplace safe and proceed to the master station. If you hear abandoned FPSO alarm, immediately go to your designated lifeboat station. If you discover fire, raise the alarm using the nearest manual alarm call and go to your master station. If you discover a man in the water, point and shout, man overboard, man overboard. Never take your eyes off the person in the water. If you discover an injured or unconscious person, raise the alarm and ask for help. Call the CCR by radio channel 6 or call 73333. There are a number of personnel on board who hold safety critical roles either because of their normal job duties are safety critical by their nature 
or because they're trained to perform a specific safety critical task in an emergency. If you've been designated an emergency role, ensure to check your required duty and any equipment associated with that duty, for example, fire team member. Following are some of the key roles on board the FPSO. In the event of an emergency, the OIM is in command of the emergency response and has the authority to order the abandonment of the FPSO if he deems it necessary. A control room operator is assigned to the Central Control Room or CCR. They provide 24-hour cover monitoring the operational parameters of the process systems and responding to upset conditions and alarms during emergencies. There is a trained and certified medic on board the FPSO at all times. The medic is responsible for treating anyone who's sick and they will also provide primary care to anyone who's been injured. Depending on the seriousness of an injury or illness, the medic has access to onshore medical support for advice. Medivac services are also available through Talogana Emergency Response, supported by the West African Rescue Association or Accra Medical Facilities. There are a number of personnel on board who hold safety critical roles. Key roles are held by the OIM, the medic and the CCR operator. These personnel are fully trained and highly qualified in matters of safety. It's important that we respect them and follow their instructions. Care or cultural awareness resides in everyone or care cards are strategically located within the common areas of the accommodation building. These cards allow you to report any situation that requires correction, ideas for improvement or even to recommend recognition to others for exceptional performance. Care cards should be completed and turned into your line supervisor or the HSE coordinator who will review and disseminate up through the OIM and track any actions required through completion. This is an excellent way to show your concerns and your participation in the safe operations of the FESO. The use of personal protective equipment or PPE is required at all times when outside of the accommodation and in machinery spaces. Basic PPE includes hard hat, safety glasses, gloves, coveralls, steel-toed shoes or boots and ear plugs or ear muffs in high noise areas. In addition, various activities may require the use of specific PPE. If you're unsure about the PPE required for the job you're performing, ask your supervisor. If at any time you witness or you're involved in an incident, no matter how minor you might think it is, you are required to report it immediately to your supervisor or the EHS department on extension 73106 or 73107. This includes any injury or illness, near misses, spills or equipment damage. These must be reported immediately in order to rectify the condition or situation and to avoid recurrence. Be aware that there are several areas on the FPSO with limited or restricted access. These areas include the turret, e-house, server room, radio room, pump room and the engine room. Contact the CCR operator if you require entrance to any of these areas. Be on the lookout for any barricades which have been put in place for your protection against various hazards. Barricades will also be fitted with appropriate signs to indicate the hazard. Do not enter any barricaded area without authorization from the supervisor in charge of the area. All lifting equipment must be certified for use. The certification period is indicated by the use of a color code system which is used on all lifting equipment. Please check that you are aware of a current valid color code.
Waste aboard the FPSO is separated according to its type. Waste bins and skips are labelled according to waste groups and there are separate bins for paper and plastic, cans and bottles and oily rags. Remember, never throw any waste overboard. Always use the appropriate waste bin or skip and never discharge or pour any liquids overboard. In the event of a liquid hydrocarbon leak from process equipment, open and closed deck drain systems and bunding are located throughout the FPSO process area to safely contain and capture the release. It's very important that you remove any trash or debris from your work activities which might accumulate in sumps and drain intakes. Always wear the correct PPE when outside the accommodation area. Report any incidents to your supervisor or the HSE department. Separate wastes into appropriate bins and skips. Keep your work site tidy so that drains and pumps don't get clogged. International Ships and Port Security or ISPS code requires that the FPSO has a security plan in place. There are currently three security levels and these are Security Level 1 where minimum security measures are maintained along with normal operations. Security Level 2 where additional security measures are in place as a result of a heightened risk of a security incident and Security Level 3 where further security measures are in place for a limited period of time. When a security incident is probable, report all security-related incidents or suspicious events to the HSE coordinator or the OIM. This includes incidents at the heliport. If the security threat changes, you will be informed. Please note that the searches of the heliport for forbidden articles such as firearms will be intensified when the security level is greater than 1. In summary, here are some basic do's and don'ts to keep in mind while you're doing your work on the FPSO. Plan your work through TRAs and obtaining work permits as required. Perform work only if you have the proper skills, tools and authorization and ask for help if needed. Replace or close any gates, chains or doors you unlatch or open. Use proper lifting techniques and get help when necessary. Remove any scrap and trash upon completing a task from the worksite. Return and store tools and material properly. Inspect tools, equipment and slings prior to use. Wear all required PPE. Report unsafe work conditions or behaviors either directly to your supervisor or using the care cards. Report any damage or breakages. Don't actuate any switches, valves or any device you are not trained and authorized to use. Do not enter confined spaces alone or without a permit. Do not climb alone. Do not cross any barricades without authorization. Do not climb near deck edges or handrails of 5 feet or higher without hooking up to fail protection first. And finally, do not go to restricted, remote or dark places alone or without proper authorization. Following these standard work practices will help maintain a safe working environment. We are proud of our safety record at Mode Tullo. Sending you home safely at the end of the day is our number one priority.